Uh, hey, hey, guys. Uh, David Emily back again. Um, another CS50 video. This time we're going to be going over um, filter. So the problem gives you a picture and a bunch of different functions it wants you to do. And then you implement those functions. And you can either view the picture that comes out on the other side or you can just run their program, uh, their test program, and tells you. Super cool problem. I enjoyed this. I don't get to play around with images too much on my job, so it's always kind of fun to go back and do this. I did a lot of this in undergrad. So let's start off. I'm going to assume you've already uh, read the problem. You know what's going on. The walkthroughs on this video or on this problem are super helpful. So if you have not watched this walkthrough yet, I recommend you going to watch that before you come and watch me because I'm pretty much just going to say how I implemented it and I'm going to leave it up to you all uh, if you had other ideas or, um, yeah. So definitely watch, watch the walkthroughs, give this problem a try. This is going to be the less hard one, so I will not be going over the harder one. <laughs> this one took a lot longer than I thought it would. Um, but anyways, let's just jump into it. Like I said, it uh, took a little bit. Um, so right off the bat, I know this problem is going to make use of the math library for rounding. Uh, they mentioned that in the walkthrough on one of the problems, basically we're going to have to round on a lot of the problems. So I'm going to go ahead and include that. Uh, it's not included for so f.h. Cool. Okay, so that's in there. Let's start off on the grayscale. So grayscale is we're going to be looking at each pixel or each uh, bit independently and looking at the color associated with it. So it's RGB, so you've got an array, uh, or I'm sorry, it's a structure. We can actually pull it up over here on this BMPH. So we've got RGBT blue, green, and red, and then from these we make different colors. Grayscale is we find the average between all those and make it that. So working with a two-dimensional array, we have height and width and then they pass in height and width. So we're gonna use four statements, four loops to go over all of these to look at each separate dot. So let's just start off that with, um, I typically use int i and j. Uh, for this, I'm actually gonna spice it up and use row just for probably the first problem. See, I'm already messing up. I'm already falling back on i. Um, but hopefully just use this so uh, maybe make it easier for you if you're just now watching this, if you're still getting used to playing around with graphs because this graph is just like uh, a table. You've got your rows and your columns, and we want to go through those and look at each spot independently, so every spot on this graph. So if it helps, you don't even have to think of this as a picture. You can just think of this as a graph, and we're just going in and manipulating the data with how they want us to manipulate it. So uh, we're going over rows, we're going over columns. Columns going to be less than width. Rows got to be less than height. So for each of these, we want to go in and we want to find the average. C is going to have some weird float math. So you want to make sure that you're keeping track of the average as a float um, in the original sense because you're going to be dividing. So in here, this is going to be as simple as, I'm just going to steal this because we're going to use it a lot. So image and then row column. Steal this. Um, and I'm actually going to pop over here and grab this blue. So we've got the dot blue. I'm going to copy this just to make sure I don't put any spelling mistakes. Uh, this is going to be red. The order of this does not matter, just however you remember it in green. And since we want to have the average of this, I'm going to divide all of this by three because there's three colors in the RGB. And now that I have that, I want to find the integer value. I'm going to use float because if I just cast this as an integer, it's going to truncate or erase everything else after the decimal place. So I'm just going to do int, I'm just going to call it avg, um, and then float average. So it's going to get us, it's going to round it, round average. So it's going to round it to whichever decimal integer place is the closest. And now that we have the integer, we just need to go back and we need to assign this with what came out. So that's why we want to do the math before assigning it because it's going to erase whatever we had going for us. So red. And 
and finally green. And then this is a void method. We're not returning any of these things, so let's just make this and see what passes. Hey, that's all right. Um, it's always exciting when it builds the first time. It's either really exciting or really worrisome. Hopefully this is really exciting, knock on wood. So running tests, see how this comes out. Finding the average of them, um, finding the integer value of that, and then assigning that. So uh, it looks like we did not pass all the grayscales. It looks like there's a floating number problem. So I'm assuming that is because dividing it by three is causing this to float. So I'm going to change this to dot zero zero. Uh, just like I said, some weird C chart or C math to do with floats. So I'm going to make sure that we're dividing by a float instead of an integer. Uh, likewise, I could also typecast this as a float before dividing it. So if this doesn't work, I'll go back and do that. But I think this also does it. I don't typically program C in my in my day-to-day -day life. Okay, uh, all tests pass. Okay, so that time that was good. So we just had to change this to dot zero zero for the C to know that this is going to be a float coming out and not an integer. So cool, that is Grayscale. Let's move down to Sepia. I think that's how you pronounce it. They are, luckily enough, they give us the formulas needed for this. If not, I think you can find them online. But this is going to look a lot like Grayscale. So basically, we're going to iterate through every dot again in the graph. And instead of finding the average here, we're just going to insert what this is into the formula they give us. So here I'm going to go ahead and write out the same stuff. I'm actually going to use I and J here. I do it a lot faster. But just know in your back of mind, this is referring to rows and columns. So we've got a rows and our columns. Okay, and then here we want to follow this formula that they gave us. I'm actually just going to copy this formula in and pretty much just modify this for it to be exactly this way. I don't have to play around with different stuff like that. So this is going to be an integer. This is going to be an integer. And this is going to be an integer. And then when this is done, we're going to take this height or image we have of i and j and this is going to be the earlier things that we were playing around with so first we're going to do blue and that's going to be set to sepia blue Oops. copy this so i don't make any mistakes it's going to be red it's going to be equal to sepia red and green it's going to be equal to sepia green and then now we are just going to plug in these for the original. So up here, instead of original blue, we're gonna have this RGB T blue. Instead of original green, it's gonna have this. And then instead of original red, we're gonna have this. So these can be values here, or you can make them up above. I just put them in there just for readability use. And then that way, they're being uh, reinitialized every time, so we don't have to worry about leftover values or anything. So it's going through. It's grabbing the current values of the red, the green, and the blue. That's performing this mathematical formula on it, and then it's reloading those. And this formula copied straight from the Harvard 50 thing. Oh wow, I did not do so good on there. Let's see, there is a 56, 50. So blue, blue, red, red, green, green. This formula, red, green, blue. I don't know if I 
got this formula right. No, I did, because I posted this stuff in. 393 red, 279 green, 189 blue to red, green is bad. Step here, red, blue, red, green, green. Interesting. Um, oh, you know what? I bet I forgot to round. So all of this needs to be done how we did earlier. This all needs to be rounded. And then furthermore, I forgot this has a problem because we're using a BMP, which means each dot is a byte of information. We can have an overflow because a byte is base two and it tops out at 255. So I bet once I fix this, that should now work. Um, let me build this and while it's running, I'm going to do what I think we're going to have to do for the overflow. Okay, so while that's checking, this can be over 255 and this can only hold 255 because a bike can only hold that. So if we go back here, and I think they probably actually have a test around it. So let's see if we fail that test first. Okay, so more complex. Filters one, two, okay. So this, because this can be over 255, we're gonna use uh, a ternary condition. So simply say, I'm gonna say if this is over 255, I want to return 255, else return that blue. And I'm just gonna do the same down here. Else you could also make a formula or a, another function, like a helper function to do this, where you could just send in this value. I think this is also uh, easy to read. I would love to see what, uh, you know, if you all come up with a different idea for this. All right, let's try this. Hopefully one last time. It looks pretty good. It looks like we did most things. Uh, I'm assuming more complex means that the numbers are go above 255. All right, we did all of those. So now reflect. So this idea being that we're going to take this image, whatever, like this dot is over here, following on the same row, whatever dot is over here with the associated from the middle, and we're just gonna swap them. So this can be a little tricky under a couple things. Um, I'll walk through those when we get them. Basically, we're gonna make the same four that we've been making all night. So less than height, I plus plus. Same thing, int j equals, uh, it's gonna be the col or row on this, no column. I is row, j is column. So j plus plus. And then one thing I'm gonna change here is because j is what column we were on, we don't wanna go all the way across like we have been in the other problems because that's just gonna erase what we do. We're gonna to wanna to stop. So basically we're gonna have both sides working in until they meet halfway, and then we're just gonna stop. So I'm gonna make a width divided by two because we don't want the entire width, we just want half of it. Okay, so now we're here. Because we can't just hard set them as each other because the memory will be overwritten, I am just going to make temporary values to hold the integer currently in this side. So I'm just gonna say um, int red equals image i j. I'm gonna take the, steal the color up here. So that's gonna hold red, blue is gonna be the same, it's a blue. I think there is an algorithm where you don't have to do this, 
but I think it requires some weird looking math and I don't want to throw anybody off. Uh, like you add them and then you subtract. Given that we have no space constraints in this problem that I know of, I'm just going to make temporary values to hold them. And so now that we're holding on to the I side, we want to, we are able to override this side with what's over here. So I'm going to first override red, simply just because it's the top, I'm working down. So this is going to equal this again. But instead of this, because that's the same spot, this can be width minus j minus 1. So the minus 1 is because if j equals 0, that's going to be the width number. And since arrays start at 0, width is going to be one box too big. So if the picture ends here, doing width is going to be over here and it's going to cause a seg fault. So the minus 1 just keeps us from seg faulting. I'm going to take these and copy it twice and just going to call this blue. Change this to blue. And then green and change this to green. <clears throat> so this may look weird, this width minus j minus 1, but the idea being as j gets bigger and is growing out this way, j over here is also going to be bigger. Since we're subtracting width by a bigger number, it's also going to grow to the middle. So the image is going to come in like that. Uh, and it should stop correctly because we are at width, width minus 2. So now that we've overwritten this side with this side up to the middle, we just want to overwrite this with the temporary values that we already have. So those values we grabbed from this side before we overwritten this side, we're now just going to place into here. So while this is going through, these values are now in the ij side. So we're just going to override these. So this is now going to equal red. This is going to equal blue. And then finally, this is going to equal green. Man, I don't know what it is. I'm getting lucky tonight with this build stuff. Um, so, yep. So, this side, they grow in together. Sorry. So, this side up to half, we copy this data over here. We then grow these sides in together, overriding this side with what's in this side. And then when they meet in the middle, we then put the temporary values we had first and put them over there. Except it doesn't happen like that. It happens column by column and row by row, but big picture is that's what's going on. Um, small picture is this specific row, this specific column, this specific row, this specific column. We're going to hold on to the side and sort off the group grid. We're then going like, to take this value, put it here, and then take that one off the grid and put it here. And then we're just going to do that. So I passed all the tests. Sweet. Awesome. Uh, we're doing good today. Finally, we've got blur. So blur is a, <clears throat> a little bit different. We are going to take what they have and do some math. So we're going to take the average of the boxes around it. And that average is then going to be assigned to that dot. So the tricky part is, is that this math has to happen after we've gone through the graph. Or else, why is this going to skew the average every dot? So we are first going to copy, at least the way I did it, is I'm going to copy the graph passed in. So this is just going to be simply RGB. Oh, shoot. Let me copy this. i make sure I type it in right. Um, and I'm also going to look at the thing I did earlier <laughs> in case I mess it up. So temp height. So this is going to be exactly like what we have already. And this is just going to be assigned to height, so temp equals image. So this should now be the same thing. And now we want to iterate through this image thing as we have been doing this entire night. And my idea is we're gonna do that math on that dot 
And instead of overriding then, we'll put it in the temp folder. So I'm going to start out how we have been doing for int i equals 0. i is less than height. i plus plus. Same thing. Get that width going too. OK. So now we're in here. And we're going to take an average of everything. So I'm going to keep track of that average by calling just some blue. Um, we'll just initialize them to 0 right now. Some red, got uh, green. And then the tricky part gets in is if we have a corner piece, there's nothing, if this is the wall and the piece is right here, there's nothing over here. So to find the average, we'll dividing, be dividing by either six or nine. And because that can change, and we're dividing by it, I'm gonna make a float and a counter. So now anytime we count a block, we'll just increment the counter because we won't always be dividing by nine. Uh, another tricky part is since we can't count this part over there because then it'll be a seg fault is we can't just do like simple arithmetic either. We also need to check before we do math. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two more variables um, to help me keep track of all this stuff. And I'm gonna have an H and uh, another variable um, like a W or something. Um, so basically, I'm going to do for int um, h equals negative 1, because if my dot is here, I also want to do the dot previous to it. Um, h is less than 2, because I only want a dot in front of it, h plus plus. Ah, oh my goodness, what's going on? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. Okay, cool, cool. Um, Alright, I'm looking at my thing. I don't know what... Um, yeah, okay, cool. So now I'm going to, before I touch anything else, I want to do my math to make sure I don't have a seg fault so I'm not blowing myself up. Um, so if image, if I plus H is bigger than height, minus 1, I don't want to do anything. Likewise, if i minus h is bigger than height, I don't want to do anything. Height minus 1. Um, I also want to do the same thing, but for width. Um, up here I did this separately. Uh, up here, I actually had four int. Um, no, I already used K, J, let's use H. So, the same thing here. Um, but this is going to do my width. Um, additionally, you don't need a for loop. You could just hard set this. So, and actually, if I blow myself up on this, I may switch over that. Um, but the idea being that it, you'll just do minus 1 and plus 1 to even it out. Um, but so now k, h can't be bigger than that, and then j, this is actually going to be, the k is going to be less than the height. So if i plus k is less than 0, it's going to blow up. Else, if i plus h plus k is greater than height minus 1, it wants to blow up. And then we want to do the same for the bottom. So if j plus h is a bit less than 0, or if j plus h is greater than width minus 1, Where's the second parenthesis from? I don't think I want that. So if this happens, I don't want to do this for loop. So I'm just going to do a continue, which doesn't run any of the following logic. If that's not true, then I want to add up everything in these blocks. So some blue plus equals image. This is going to be h i plus k 
and and I'm gonna go back J plus H. And this is gonna be the blue off of that. And then the same thing for red and green. So this looks really weird, and I apologize for that. It probably would be easier to do the plus one, minus one. But the way this mathematically works is, given this dot, it's going to check the top left, the one above it, the top right, the one to the left, the one to the right, the bottom left, the bottom middle, and the bottom right. And that's what's going in these sums. So the, these will be the sums of everything that we have. Uh, all the blues, all the greens, all the reds. And then we want to divide this by how many ever times we have the counter. So here I'm also going to add uh, to the counter just so we know how many times we have to divide. And then after this loop, because for each dot, now this then got the eight corners around it or the um, eight sides also touching it. I want to set, but inside this i and j, because this is what dot we're specifically on, I want to set this value in the temp array. So I've got i, temp, j, and this is going to be the math of this rounded. So I'm going to do the round, and then maybe some blue divided by counter. And counter here. Uh, just so we don't have that earlier problem, and I'll also put decimals on here. You could also just call this a float there. So this here is going to be the blue. Now we're going to do the red. And then the green. Okay, so this is going to go through and do all the stuff, uh, find the averages, load up the temp array, and now here at the bottom, we want to move the temp array, everything in this image array we want to set is what we have in the temp array. So this is going to be just like we've been doing all night. So we're going to load up uh, two for loops. I could count or uh, type. It's a little late here. I'm a little tired. And then here we're going to do the image I J. I'm going to take actually this because I know this is pretty close to what I'm going to want. So now the temp of all these is now going to become image because we want to add at the very original uh, graph. And then this is going to be the blue. Uh, I'm doing a lot of copy and paste. Copy and paste is your friend. Um, I make a lot of spelling mistakes, as you can see when I'm coding, when I'm not copy and pasting. Um, just keep all the variable names the same. So I'll go ahead and build this while it's going through. Uh, make, oh, I made a mistake. So line 69, temp, ray type RGBT triple height width is not assignable. Oh, I actually don't need to make this a copy because we're loading it up. Um, because that's what this is doing. It's loading what I'm getting from the average. So I actually don't need to make a copy of it. So that's great. That's awesome. Um, so while this is running, we're iterating through each dot. Don't get too hung up on these K's and H's. Um, think of this as just going from minus 1 
that number and then plus one. I'm just doing it in a for loop. Um, I think that makes it easier. That makes like this logic easier. And then here I'm just running this if statement to make sure it stays within the boundaries around that and make sure that if it's on the wall or the ceiling that we don't go outside of the picture that's given us. And then we sum them up and we divide, giving us that average. We load this temp picture with what's going on over here. This is holding the averages. And then at the end, we just move these back into it. Um, so that is CS50's filter, playing around with images. Um, we passed all the tests. Uh, great job, everybody. Um, kind of a fun test, kind of playing around with the picture. I always, I think this problem can sound a lot harder than it is. You just gotta slow down. Instead of thinking of pictures as like, um, this thing that this technology puts together, think of it as like a pixel, like your screen is full of pixels, of RGB pixel pixels, and you just got to think of that and how you would manipulate that. Um, so thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for doing this problem with me. And until next time, um, have a good one.